Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm at the Utility Equipment Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. And we're going to walk around here and check out a lot of cool stuff. Hopefully, test drive some equipment. I've just made one pass across it, and it's crazy the size of this machinery. They're not open really for another 20 minutes, so we're just looking now. Feels like I need one of these at the house. So right now I'm walking towards the Ditch Witch exhibit and they had one of the most impressive setups in the whole show. And a lot of machinery that I didn't even realize they made, like this giant saw. But they even had some kind of a hot rod monster truck with a ditching attachment on the back that they were hot rotting around. But I didn't spend much time here because that's not what I was here to see. I came to a utility expo, which isn't in my you know, field of what I actually do, because there was a YouTube meetup. If you haven't already seen that, it was really cool. I met a lot of my favorite YouTube channels, and I've already put out a video on that that I'll link at the end. But the second reason I came was to test drive skid steers and mini excavators and I drove a bunch of them at this show. The one you're seeing right now is a John Deere 333G with a mulching head on the front. These mulching heads are awesome but that's like a thirty to forty thousand dollar setup just for the front attachment with the extreme duty door and the high flow hydraulics. Now, I was only here one day, and a couple hours were spent on the YouTube meetup, so that meant I couldn't check out everything I'd like to see, so I focused on equipment brands that have a dealer presence near me. So that was primarily Case, Cat, and Deer, and I've already driven two Bobcats on the channel, so I skipped by them as well. But I learned a little bit about the case machines and the cat machines, so I'm definitely glad I stopped in here. How's it going? Good, it, how are you? Can I drive something? Of course you can. Looks like you got your sticker, so what do you want to test out first? Yeah, I think I'll give that uh, 35G a shot. Okay, perfect. Let's go over there then. Now I test drove a skid steer and a mini excavator from each of the brands and I'm not going to put all that footage of those test drives in here but I do want to highlight the differences between them. And another thing I'll mention is I've gotten hard quotes from each of the brands and there seems to be a perception out there that deer is the most expensive and I'm not finding that to be true. They're at least competitively priced if not a little cheaper. There was nothing groundbreaking about either of the deer machines, but they were competent and operated smooth. Huh? 
I think I like driving mini excavators. Yeah. Pretty nice little machine. Yeah. Get the job done that you need it for, you think? Yeah. Right. Obviously, that one so, might be a little small for what you were saying, maybe. Yeah. Um, so I've rented a couple four-ton units and thought that was about the right size. Um, what I'm trying to decide is if I want a skid steer or a mini excavator first. Uh, you want to hop in a... Yeah. CTL I've been looking at the 325s, so okay. I saw you had one of those over we there. Do. Let's go over and take a look. Seems like a pretty good size machine to be able to actually get it on a trailer and still pull it without a CDL maybe. What is, yep. do you know what this one weighs? This one is, it's under 10. That's why I think I want to be at 10, then trailer's at 15 and with your truck you're at like 24. Yeah, I'll look, I know I can get the exact weight, but I'm pretty sure this one is either right I think I took a picture of the info about it okay. up there. Yep. One thing that I've seen pointed out on videos is that the deer machines have less side visibility, but I haven't really noticed that, and this is the third deer machine that I've driven lately. Seems pretty standard compared to the others. One thing I would point out is there's less functionality in the deer uh, screens that they put in them, and it seems like the controls maybe aren't quite as intuitive. Now we're over at the case booth, and I didn't have anything that really stuck out on the Mini X that was different from the other ones I ran, but I will say that they have on their skid steers the nicest and largest display for the backup camera that gives you a great view, but shows you the gauges at the same time as the backup camera. Out of anything I've been in, Bobcat definitely had the nicest menus and the nicest screen set up. I've been going around looking at 74 horsepower yeah, machines. Horse is that magic number, you don't have to have SCR. Yeah, that's uh, so no def is what your exactly. same kind yep. of thing. And then the ability to pull it on a flatbed with a three quarter ton and okay. not have to get a CDL. Right, okay. If you go so too had, big, then you get too heavy for that. We have three models with this 74 horsepower engine. This is the middle one. So there is a slightly smaller version that's a TR270. So that's a, our numbering convention is our, it's our lifting capacity at 50% tip. So this machine, a 310, lifts 3,100 pounds at 50% rating. So really, it would tip at 6,200. Big thing for me is a pallet plywood, 3,500 pounds, and okay. I move those regularly. And I know that's technically over, and but, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it enough, with yeah. a machine this size, I exactly. think. Yeah, that's, that's actually a little high. I think a lot of them are more like 28, 2,900 on right. this I'd size. Right, i say it has a little brother that's a 2,700 pound machine. Yeah, we just 
and then there's a bigger machine that we offer that's a 3,700 pound machine. So, but that's a higher horse, though, right? No, it's, that's it's still, still in 74 the... horse. It's a different frame. So if you look at the TV 450 here, um, basically rear of the tracks, the back end, the engine compartment is bigger. This is our large frame versus our medium frame. Mm -hmm. So there is a TV 370 that visually looks very similar to this machine. It's the bigger chassis. It's a vertical lift, but it's still the 74 horsepower. So it's kind of whether you want the radial arm, vertical arm, Medium yeah, that's what. Large chassis these kind of are like, the radial arms, aren't correct. they? Yeah. So in our naming convention, the R's are radials and the V's are verticals. And um, do you feel like that really makes a big difference? It on... really depends on what you're doing. So your advantage of doing of having a radial lift is that it's simpler. There's less linkage points. There's less geometry. If you're working from the ground to eye level or so, you're some guys actually prefer it for digging holes and that type of stuff. Where you start to, the trade-off is, when you start getting higher, your arm starts coming back over your cap. So you have less reach to go into a dump truck if you're like a, a, a farmer that's lifting big hay bales, trying to put them in a barn. It'll still do it, but you've lost some of that reach because of the radial of the arm. You have to be right up against where you're setting right. it. Right, yeah. So then your vertical lift machine, it gives you that full reach at full height, you know, straight up, but your trade-off there is it is a little more expensive and you've got more linkage points, more grease points. Now that, this is the other? I thought these were all radius or? So these, this, the two on the outsides are both verticals. This is the only radial we got out here. Okay. And you can see how they have this link here. It's because they have the two Right, see there's an extra link right here. Okay. So the arm is actually pinned here and there's an H. Oh, I see, so that comes, yeah. As you raise, it's... Instead of just pivoting it's, on that, I got it now. Yeah, this is just simply an arc. Okay. okay. So I can just move a little dirt with it yeah. now? Yeah, you're welcome to go in there. Um, Steel, it is steel, isn't it? So this machine is going to cut through three inches of root. Yeah, it's going to pop a rock the size of a softball out of a trench. Um, so you bend that over, it's not a lot of fun if you're doing long drives. Yeah, I've never had it. that axle, the center axle there, you attach the machine just to that, and slide it in. Yep. But basically, you yeah, undo the, the, the belt cover with the single screw, you do the three bolts here, starter comes off just like you're changing the belt. Their whole entire arm will come off with the cutting wheel disc on it. You put our trenching arm on it and put your bolts back on. Oh, so, so within five, less than five minutes, you can convert it from a concrete saw to a trencher. And then you can always convert it right back. So you can okay. get two different uses out of your power head. Yeah. So it comes with our trenching arm, uh, the safety guard, the blade, two chains, and it comes with the easy cart you see there. Right now I don't have the machine on it, but we can start to put it on there. So you're gonna go for this one and you're gonna get the piece of the forks. You're gonna drag them back, have the ball fall down, the bottom of the forks. And you're gonna go down to that orange ball, do the same, red ball, White ball, I guess it's gray now, it's getting kind of dirty. And then you're gonna have four balls on the forks and then you're gonna come up here and you're gonna dump those into the bucket. Oh, you're trying to pick them all up, okay. Yeah, that's that's the challenge, that's the game. Is to yeah. Them all. Oh. So Kat had this little game set up where you try to move four soccer balls into a little tote with the skid steer. And that was a lot of fun. I was able to get three of the balls. The very first one, 
rolled down the forks too fast and fell off the side. But I lost the better footage of that. But I will say I was impressed by the cap machines. Especially on the mini excavators, they had a really nice screen and a feature that allows you to switch the control setup so that you can drive with the two joysticks. And I think that is an industry first and would really be helpful on long days on the machine. I know I keep mentioning the screens when it seems like I should be talking about the capabilities, but they all seem to have similar lift capacities. So what stands out to me is how intuitive the controls are. I asked each of these manufacturers what it was about their brand that made them the right choice. And they all said the dealer network and serviceability. And they happen to be the three dealers closest to me, so maybe that's the truth on all of them. Okay. Pretty good getting three out of three out of four in the middle setting. Yep, had a li little bit, uh, not quite as steep. Would have been better for that first one, but that was more fun than moving the dirt. I've moved dirt a few times already. Yeah, that was more fun. Well, that's good. Yeah. And you know what? In every Hall of Fame around the world, three out of four is fantastic. Right? So. Yeah. If that was my batting average, I'd be yeah, up there. Yeah, you'd be doing real good. Leave that open, probably. Time. Yeah, if you want to hop out the way that you can. And, yeah. All right. So, yeah. and, and if I go to all the dealers in my area and they all have a machine with this horsepower, do you have any th reason, like, what you would say about CAT? Anything that, like, what they stand out in? or well, What does CAT do well? It's, it's, yeah. Well, every manufacturer like has things that they, so it's they like do your, well. One of the things that we pride like ourselves your, uh, on is operator uh, comfort and having a, a seat that's very comfortable. We have joysticks that are adjustable. They move back and forth. They give you more ability to tailor the cab to you. And everything moves with the seat. So as you're going through you know, rough terrain or something like that, um, you stay, you keep that comfortable position. We also pride ourselves on serviceability. If you want to take a quick look. Sure. But otherwise, i got to leave the master switch on. i got to leave the master switch on. Uh, you'll know that... When you open the door here, we've got our coolant pack up top here, so you have easy access to everything in the engine bay, and you have your standard service points. Hydraulic filters here, your fuel water separator here, your engine dipstick. You can see your coolant levels, you have your air filter here, you have your fuel, and then you have your oil filter on the side there. So everything's kind of a one-stop shop. Easy to get to. You don't got to take things apart to access anything. You don't have to pop the cab to access any filters. We also have a suspended under here to give you more comfortable ride and help you track as well. Great. And this machine would weigh about 10,000 pounds? Well, uh, the way this one is configured now, it's about 95. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. That's a sweet spot for me for transporting. It's about yeah, less than 10. 10. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks again for your time. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'm going to put links to a couple more of our videos on the screen, and I'll see you next time.